Hey everyone, uh, this review, I'm doing a review of the CAR CM9. Uh, not really an unboxing, I've already opened this thing up and um, I've had it about two weeks now, but uh, what you get, you just get a little black box, you open it up, got your, all your manuals, or a manual and all the paperwork, take this, flip it up, this little foam board. Mine came with um, the firearm, the gun lock, and one magazine. I have purchased the seven round. It comes with a six round magazine. I've purchased the seven round extension. And then I have another six, but I don't have it up here with me to show you. But uh, yeah, I went ahead and took out these little pinch foam pieces, you know, just for the box. You can tell they kind of use the same box for all their guns because I don't know if you can see it right here, but they they can pinch it out based on like this is the the CM9 between the what, what's their bigger model like their full size I think is like well mid size I think is the CW and then the CT you can tell you know they just pinch it out based on the the gun but like I said I've had it about two weeks let me go ahead and show clear and safe for you so. No magazine, no round in the chamber. And then our magazines, you got two followers. Move this stuff out of the way. So yeah, had it about two weeks and um I only I've only had fifty rounds through it. And I'm gonna tell you right now, uh I like it. Um I bought it because summer's coming around and I wanted a good little pocket gun. Uh, something I could carry and uh, it'd be light and uh, I didn't really want to go the 380 route I have a lot of 9 mil so I've stuck with the 9 mil uh, so with this one this is a 9 mil um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you since I've cocked it right I cocked it when I showed it clear and safe we're gonna do the trigger pull so ready and then we'll do the reset And it's pretty smooth. Um, this trigger is not the trigger that came with it. Um, I've done a few things to this gun since I've had it. And um, I'm going to kind of go over that as we get into the review here. But this is not the trigger that came on it. Um, it comes with a little a standard, uh, you know, I, what they call that, like a pumpkin sight. You know, you just line them up. And this front post here is uh it's just a plastic post this one on here right now is not but um what they do is, is they just put it on there and then i'll show you when i take the slide off they kind of just melt the ends so that way it fills the hole and it can't come out um through car i actually purchased this front tritium one that's got two set screws that hold it in and uh yeah it's full on metal the rears are metal and um, this trigger, I guess I'll go ahead and mention it, is the Galloway Precision Trigger. The, they call it the Gallo Glass Trigger. Um, probably one of the hardest triggers I've put in a gun. Um, but um, it took, I mean, it's straightforward. It's easy, to take, it's easy to take apart. It's always easy to take stuff apart, right? But when I was putting it back together, it there's the, the, the spring for this. There's a... Also, I forget what they call the part, but there's like this little cap that goes on the other side of the spring that holds all of this together and getting it orient oriented in there just right as you're putting it together was kind of a pain. But, um, I mean, the whole process, if I didn't have an issue with it and did it right first try, would probably take you 20 minutes. But it took me about an hour because I had to fiddle with it getting it back together. The assembly was the hard part. This assembly was pretty straightforward. But um yeah, uh it holds 6 rounds. So the magazine, the flush fit magazine holds 6. And then um you can get a uh plus 1 7. And I'll show you what those look like in here. So there's your 7. And I can get I'm 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 6 foot 1. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty heavy dude. I got big hands, 
but um, I can get two fingers on there. I can get the third underneath there, and when you're shooting it, it I mean, it. if you're used to shooting small guns, you're not going to have an issue with it. I have a SIG P365 that I'm going to compare it to here in a minute, and I, I didn't have an issue with this gun. I actually really like the way this gun shoots. I like that it's slim. I like that I can get a good grip on it. And then the seven-round mag... Um, I can get all three fingers on there with just a li little bit of over, not much overhang. I'm pretty much got a full purchase on that with this. And um, when I went to shoot the gun, I didn't have the seven round mag yet. I only had the, the one six round mag. So I only went through a box of 50. It was, you know, I didn't, it's easier to shoot when you got more mags to load, right? But um, it's, um, it shot. It shoots good. I did buy this one second hand. It's not brand new, um, but it. I mean, the person that had it before me, it looked like they didn't shoot it a lot. When I took it apart, um, and I'll show you real quick. The mags drop freely, but um, <clears throat> they. It looked like they didn't shoot it a lot. Um, it looked like they had shot it. I could tell that there was residue from the the gunpowder, but. Um, it's virtually brand new. Um, I've always wanted a car. Um, I mean, if you look at my other YouTube videos, you see the firearms that I have. Um, just to say it right now, I've always wanted one. Um, when I was looking at my first firearm that I ever purchased, handgun-wise, was the Smith & Wesson SD9. And I had looked at a car. I would actually looked at the CW9, the one that's got slightly bigger than this one. And I've always wanted one. And I finally just broke down and got one. And um, I did get the little one. But if I was going to get another one, I think I would get the full-size CT9. And I think it holds eight rounds, you know. And I, there's going to be the argument made for capacity and whatnot. But, I mean, people carry 1911s with eight rounds. What's wrong with a 9 mil with eight rounds? Um, so, let me see. I don't know if you can kind of see it the C series for the cars are like their, um, I guess they're consumer ones, they're budget friendly ones. And, um, you can, uh, I guess from the research I've done, right. If it gets, if you get the PM series, like this is the CM nine, if you get the PM nine, it's, this is all engraved in while this is roll, they use a roll on it, but I mean, it's smooth, you know, there's no jagged marks. There's no, um, tooling marks on the gun anywhere. And, um, as far as I can tell, I think as far as the lower goes, I think that it's the same as far as the PM series go. They, um, uh, your slide stop uh, for the C series is MIM. It's uh, was it metal injection molding, and I think on the uh, the PM series, it's a uh, it's actually like a milled piece. But um, this is, I mean, I, I don't see any issues with it on forums I've read. I've never heard of this breaking. But um, let's see. Let me go ahead and break it down for you. <clears throat> uh, so for the breakdown on this one, right, uh, it's not hard, but the, the spring on it, it, it it's, it's a tiger spring, right? So in order to break it down, there's two notches. If my camera will focus, there's a notch. Come on, focus. There's a notch here, and then a notch here, and you got to line them up. So what's happening is you line them up, and um, you're pressing this out from the other side. So there's that little nub there. You're going to press it out. Um, mine is, like I said, I'm pretty sure this gun had never been fired a whole lot because um, everything's still super tight on, on the gun. It's still tight. Like I had... I've seen videos where people push these out and some people need a tool to push them out. Like I'll push it against the table to push it out a little bit so I can get it. Yeah, it's still tight. So what you'll do is you'll line up those two knot, dots. Let me see if I can do it with my finger. <clears throat> no, I can't do it with my finger. So Okay, so I pushed it out enough. And you can see where I've, my, the dots are lined up. So now I should be able to pull it out, hopefully. Come on now. Let's see. 
I don't have a tool up here. Ooh, all right, yeah. This gun's a little bit more difficult for me to pull apart. It's not like my Glocks or my Smith & Wessons. But, um, okay, so from this part, right, when you get to here, now you're gonna pull the trigger and then slide comes off, okay? You definitely need to make sure this gun's clear and safe before you take it apart. You gotta pull the trigger. So this is the slide stop, right? It's kind of like a 1911, right? When you take it out, it's what's holding everything together and it's, you know, it's locked into the barrel. That's where it's, that's where it's going, right? <clears throat> when it, when it's being put in. But uh, if you look internally, it kind of looks like a Glock, right? It's kind of the same style slide almost. Um, and it's got a, a dual recoil spring. This rear one's captive. This front one's not. So when you go to take it apart, you kind of, you got to be careful because it'll shoot off, right? So what I'm talking about is that this will come off. So the rear's captive. It, st it stays on there. This front one's not. Go to put it back on there. Okay. And then um, your barrel. You can tell, like, this thing looks brand new. And I didn't clean it. After I cleaned it before I took it to the range, but I haven't cleaned it since I've been back. Uh, I wiped it down before I did the review, but um, yeah, you know what is interesting to me is that they say that this barrel is like it's offset, it's not completely centered, and then it's kind of higher on this side than it is on this side. But it's it's really smooth, it's really finely polished. This ramp, um, I had zero feeding issues whatsoever with this gun. Um, I did have an issue with the slide locking back on the last round, but I'm going to tell you how I fixed that problem. Um, the slide is pretty basic. It kind of looks like a Glock slide, right? Like every other semi-auto slide. Now, like I said, I replaced this front with a uh, tritium front from car, and there's the two screws in there use to hold it in place just use some red loctite that's what they shipped with this site so that's what i used um it's in there solid doesn't wiggle and then um so right here right this um spring for your, your striker your striker spring it has its own little mini guide rod and it's polymer and um, I actually replaced this one with a steel one, and Galloway Precision has one, but I didn't use that one. I actually bought one through M Carbo, and they were a little cheaper. And I like M Carbo, so I've used their parts before on other firearms I own. So I went with that, and I can actually show you. I have the little baggie here of spare parts. Um, this is what it looks like. You now it's it's a black polymer. <clears throat> if I can get it out. I don't know. So here's the, I don't know, you can, it's definitely plastic. Like I can bend it in my, in my hand. And, um, honestly it's not misshapen or anything. So, I mean, it might've been fine, but, uh, I figured what's another, I think I paid 14 95 or something like that for the part. And, um, it's like why not why not get it you know I can just for a peace of mind I'll put it in there and then uh, let's see let's talk anything else about this taking that out was pretty straightforward um, you got to compress the spring and then the um, there's a, a pin like almost like a like a pin a spring another pin for your extractor and uh, you have to, you're gonna have to like, you have to press this pin in for this to fall out so that this pin comes out the front and then you can take this plate off. Um, wasn't difficult. Um, I, I think putting this in took me all of five minutes. It wasn't difficult. Um, but yeah, I mean, the way it's machined, uh, I mean, it's solid, right? It's got a nice weight to it. Uh, there's no tooling marks of any kind whatsoever in here. It's smooth. Everything is smooth in here. 
I'm going to move on to the uh, the frame here. Okay, so uh, some people will say like, uh, you know, it rides on polymer frame, on, a, on polymer rails. Well, it, I mean, it does and it doesn't, right? This is all polymer. This is a full length rail. It's not a, like a set up front and a set back. It's a full length rail that's polymer back to here where they have these steel inserts put in. So it's riding on that. But well, I guess a lot of people don't know is, is that there's a guide up here. These, this, this is a metal, a thin piece of metal that's riding on this here, these notches here. So as it's cycling in and out, it's riding that too. So um, I don't know what people are saying. I mean, I don't see any wear on this. Uh, and, you know, I went through 50 rounds and I'm, I'm sure it's going to need a whole lot more. Probably in its lifetime with me, it's not going to get used a whole lot. You know, I'll take it to the range, make sure I'm proficient with it. But it's made to be like my pocket gun, summer gun, get off me gun, you know. Um, it, but, I mean, everything in here, the polymer's nice. It's got a good quality to it. I don't, it doesn't seem like it was just thrown together or slapped together. It, I mean, it, and it's solid too. Like this grip, if you squeeze it, there's no flex to it. Um, it's, it's a really nice frame. The mag release is metal and it, and on the other side, it's metal as well. Internally it's metal. So it's nice. You got a metal mag release for metal mags. Um, <clears throat> the, um, the trigger. Okay. So I mentioned the trigger earlier. This is the trigger that it comes with. This little curve, curve face trigger. Nothing wrong with this trigger. It's a great trigger. I thought that, you know, since I was going to be doing some stuff to it, I might as well just put a, a different trigger in it and be done with it. And uh, I don't regret it, um, but you don't have to do that. It's got a good trigger as it is. It's And, and their triggers are smooth. I went in and did it, and like I said, it, it took me a minute. Disassembly wasn't hard. It's this pin here. You punch it out, it comes out the back. It only goes in one way. One side's got a flat face on it, so this side's going to go in here. But um, you punch it out. Um, you've got your spring, and there's this little cap. You're not going to see it on camera, but on the other side of the trigger spring, there's a cap that kind of holds it all together, and it holds this trigger bar in. And um, the, the, the trigger bar, you're not going to be able to see it, I don't think. But the trigger bar is held in with that cap, and that all comes out, and then your trigger drops out. And you put the new one in, you get everything set up, and getting that dang spring and that cap put in just right, it was frustrating. And um, my problem was, was that I was using a small flathead to kind of guide everything in, but that tip on it was magnetic. So I would, I would get it set in, and I would pull it away, and it would shift everything. So, um, yeah. That was part of my headache. Uh, something I want to show you real quick. So as it goes together, this set screw right here holds this little spring in. Let's see if I can get it to focus right there. There's a spring that goes around this set screw. And that's what's holding all this in. There's that little notch right there. And then that spring edge holds that. So when this is all put back together properly, this is how this sits in here okay so this little spring is what's holding your mag or your uh, slide release down okay so what holds it up right what makes the slide lock to the rear and that's an empty magazine this follower that's why it's got this little metal tab right here on the follower that little button that's what's pushing this up to catch your slide so problem I was having See, now you can kind of see how it went up. It's pushing it up. So that's so that empty that last round, this empty mag, this follower is what's catching your slide back, right? So when I first started shooting the gun, I only had the one six round mag. And you're gonna notice it right here. See it pushed it up. Um it was like 50-50. It would, it would lock the slide back or it didn't. The gun functioned flawlessly as far as feeding rounds. I didn't have a single failure to failure to fire, a failure to eject, uh, or a stoppage of any kind. The gun functioned flawlessly. 
But what I found was when I took it apart, the magazine was that it, um, the spring, I, I kind of stretched it out a little bit and it started locking this back more. Um, how I fixed it. The, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the company Wolf Springs. Uh, they sell springs for these magazines and I went and bought the plus 5% power for these springs and they are, when you compare them to the, um, uh, original springs, they are, they are definitely longer and you can tell when you load this mag up for the first time that there's definitely more power behind it. So with there being more power behind this follower, it's going to push this slide stop up more affirmatively to lock your slide back. So, um, I don't know if that's an issue with them or, you know, the fact that I bought this used and that being the thing, but I went ahead, it was 17 bucks to buy three springs for the six round magazines. And it was like, uh, I want to say it was like seven bucks to buy one for this. So you can buy them in one, three, or a 10 pack, I think. And I went and bought a three pack for this and I bought one for this. And you can tell that it positively pushes this up. So don't know if that's something you might want to look into. Um, like I said, that was a cheap fix too. And I had them in a couple of days. But um, that's something I recommend. If you do anything to this gun, you don't have to put in the metal front sight. You don't need to put in this um, striker guide rod for the spring. You what I say, you don't have to put in this trigger, but if I recommend you do anything is get the wolf springs for these mags. Um, um, I have yet to test fire them. I just know that, you know, when I put my, um, snap caps in here and I'm, and I'm cycling through them that every time I'm getting a definitive, um, slide lock back every time that last round is ejected. So, um, might be a, a cheap fix if you're having that issue with these firearms. But as far as how they function, how they feed, it's 100% flawless. But that's, all, that's only my speaking through 50 rounds. I'm probably going to do an update here soon, as soon as I can get back to the range. I, I didn't want to fully test it and not have all my parts installed. But, um, and now that I've got more mags, it kind of makes that easy. But, uh, yeah, like I said, this that little spring that holds this in is tight. See, I can get it out right there, but um, I mean the gun ain't gonna fall apart on you. But yeah, let me go ahead and get it back, put it back together. I'm gonna show you how. So, uh, <clears throat> recoil spring guide rod. Oh well, barrel first. Sorry, y'all. You can get your barrel in. Recoil spring guide rod. It's gonna go in this bottom hole here, and then there's a little shelf right here and there's a definitive edge on this and this is where this is gonna end up it's gonna end at that edge so you're gonna push it all down and you gotta be careful because it's not captive so it could shoot off on you and you wanna make sure it's all centered upright because I've I've done this and it not be centered upright and uh, you go to put it back together and it's it you gotta take it back apart and get it centered so center your guide rod and springs okay and we're going to slide everything back together. And before you, you're going to get it kind of lined up. And here's our slide stop. You're going to get the, get this started. It's going to go into the barrel. Okay. Now, this little notch right here is going to line up with this notch so that way you can go in. So now you're going to push back. And boom, there it is. Go back together. Um, yeah, I mean, from what I can tell you of this firearm so far is that it is a solid firearm. Um, that's only me speaking through a box of 50 rounds. It was 115 grain Winchester white box. And, uh, you might ask yourself, well, 
part two of this. Why would I choose this firearm over, let's say, a SIG P365? I'm going to show you clear and safe real quick. No magazine. There's no round in the chamber. So, if you hold them like this, right, you're looking at them, you're like, wow, they really do look like they're the same size, and virtually, they are, right? We're talking, so I got them lined up back to back, front to front. I think the SIG is just a hair longer, and then if we look at them, if we line the tops of the slides together, they're identical, Okay, um, now the difference is, so here's my six round flush. Okay, here's an empty mag for the SIG. There's the follower. 10 round flush. All right, now why would you compromise, you know, capacity? Well, um, I've found that, you know, pocket carrying they're almost identical. You know, you, I mean, I think having a firearm is better than not having a firearm. And, uh, you know, whether you've got five shots, you've got six shots, you've got a six shot revolver, five shot revolver, you know, a six shot semi-auto, or you've got a 10 shot semi-auto, having something's better than nothing. Um, and I'm going to tell you the truth. I've always wanted a car. I've always wanted one. I like the way they look. I, I've, I, now that I have one, I like the way it feels. I like the way it shoots. Um, the trigger on it is great. It doesn't break as crisp, like not as, not, I wouldn't, crispy is the wrong, crisply is the wrong term. The fact that it's such a short break and reset on this gun is, is I would say that this one's probably going to be, it is a, the, I'm not going to say probably, I do shoot this one better, but I don't think, I think with some training with this one, I could probably shoot this one just as good. And, uh, that's where the issue lies. It's all a training thing. Having something's better than nothing. I've always wanted one of these and guess what? Past two weeks since I've shot it and uh, I've carried it and I'm probably not going to stop carrying it. This one's still a go-to. I still, in the waistband, this one, I still uh, could pocket carry this one during the summer. I've just always wanted one of these guns. Um, when it comes to your choice of a pocket firearm or just a sidearm in general, um, you know, having something is better than nothing. People want to talk bad about high points. Uh, yeah, they're not... the. They're not the best guns. They're not the great guns. Not the, the best guns by far. But if you've got $100 to spend on a used high point, it's better than not having any firearm. you got a single mom who doesn't make a whole lot of money, and maybe having a high point is all she can't afford. It's better than having nothing, and I would recommend that to anyone. Um, you know, I think, I, I mean, this was, I can't remember what I paid for this SIG, right? But, um... I mean, I picked this up at a pawn shop for uh, right about 300 I think it was 300 300 bucks. Um, and I, I, I don't regret it. I don't regret it. I, I've always, I, I've always, like I keep saying it, I've always wanted a car. And I really want the CT9 as well, just the full-size one. Uh, I think if you've ever held one of these guns and you can feel the quality in it and you, you shoot it, you'll understand but um, I don't think that this is a bad option. If, um, if this review was helpful for you, uh, just let me know. Um, there's always some things that I could do to make, uh, make my reviews a little better. It's something I always kind of forget to. I'm going to show you what it weighs. I always forget this part in my reviews. So I'm going to zero that out, right? So we got zero ounces. This is unloaded, no magazine, 15.2 ounces, okay? Um, I'm not going to load up a magazine, but let's throw the magazine on there. You got 16.9. So I don't know. Let's take one, two, three, four, five, 
Let's take six, because this is a six round mag. Let's load up six mag, six bullets on here. So it's three, four, five, six. What does that say? 19.3. So 19.3 ounces fully loaded. Okay. That's in your pocket. You know, that would, um, that's 19.3 ounces of security. So, I mean, and if you compare that, right, let's look at, uh, let's look at the SIG, right? Here's what it weighs. No mag unloaded. It's already, it's 16.8. There's a 10 round mag. It's 18.9. Let's take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Here's 10. Let's do 10 rounds on that. Oops. Sorry, y'all. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So you got 10 rounds at 23 ounces. So, I mean, you know, I say you carry what is comfortable to you. I'm going to alternate between these two. I've always wanted a car, and I'm I'm stoked that I finally have one. Um, so whatever you get, you need to make sure that you're training with it. Because if you don't train with it, what's the point? But uh, yeah, this is my review of the Car CM9. Uh, if you like it. Please hit the like button. Uh, all these firearms are firearms that I purchase, and uh, I'm going to give you an unbiased review of them. Uh, I don't get sponsored by anybody. I get nothing from no one. Everything is done through my own money. So um, I'm going to tell you like it is. Money's getting tighter and tighter for everyone as time goes on, as we can tell with the current state of the economy. So I'm not going to BS you on, on a firearm. So, yeah, if you could, just hit like. If you do like it, if you don't like it, that's okay, too. Hope everyone has a good day, and I'll see you next time.